Why is me? I just think Okay, sorry for the late start of those last minute changes to the uh, lecture slides. Um, <clears throat> so uh, if, you, if you didn't notice, the homework, uh, first homework assignment went out this morning. Um, it's a fairly straightforward homework assignment. Um, that's why uh, you have less than a week to do this one. Uh, this is uh, due next Wednesday. Um, from that point on, lectures will, uh, the homework assignments will go out on Tuesday. Um, I actually don't know, but sorry, they'll go out Wednesday morning, they'll be due Wednesday evening of the following week. So you have a full eight-ish days to do those. Um, the specification is here. Um, I'm, not, I'm not really going to spend too much time on this, um, but basically your goal is to build a web page that looks like this. Um, for this particular homework assignment, you have to match output pretty exactly. Um, you're going to be putting together some, uh, you're, you're provided with the content for this page, the, uh, the, the actual text information on the page. You basically have to supply the, the HTML tags, HTML structure for the page, and then do a little bit of CSS style, uh, styling for it. Um, all the colors and fonts and things are specified in the, in the write-up. Um, so you have to read that pretty carefully. It specifies everything. Make sure you don't forget anything. Um, other than that, it's fairly straightforward. Um, for those CSE majors, um, this is going to be a thing for all of the homework assignments. Uh, for CSE majors, uh, you, there, there are some optional extras um, that you can do. CSE majors have to do them all. Um, so uh, one of the things that they try to, to add to make the course a little bit more difficult for you guys. Um, I think that's pretty much all I want to talk about. Um, the, the write-ups for this course, just like the write-ups for 142, 143, they're very dense, so you have to make sure that you catch everything. Um, read everything very carefully. If you don't understand something, ask, you know, about what, what does this paragraph mean? What does this sentence mean? Um, uh, and, and, you know, just try to make sure you uh, uh, understand what's going on. Um, this is the skeleton file. This has all of the text, so you're going to be adding the, uh, the HTML code to this. Um, you can use something called the web page comparison tool if you if you like if you like to. Um, what this allows you to do is uh, compare your page with um, a, a screenshot of our page. Um, so you, you specify your UWNet ID right here, um, and what it does is it fetches your page there and it, it overlays it with uh, with our screenshot. Um, the problem with this is that it's not very, it can be very misleading. Um, the goal of, of this assignment is to, um, is to have plausibly good HTML code. Um, and if you have good HTML code, it's possible that your solution doesn't look like our solution. Conversely, it's possible that you might have really terrible code that you have, have put together just so that it looks pixel perfect, which is not something you, that you should do. Um, you should approach this, this assignment from this, the perspective that you want to have just good tags, good HTML tags, that are appropriate for uh, the content. And there are certain things in, the, in, the, uh, um, in our screenshot that sort of give a hint as to what tag that we used. Um, oftentimes we will sort of, obviously if we use that tag, then it's sort of appropriate, right? Because we don't make mistakes. But, um, but if you decide that that, uh, that that tag is not really what you want to use and you decide to use a different tag that's equally appropriate, that's okay, even if it doesn't look just like this. Um, chances are, well, let me think. I, I, I can't really think of uh, an, an instance where where you might actually do that. But the spirit of this, the spirit of the web page comparison tool is, um, it's actually, it really should be taken with a grain of salt. Um, the spirit of the assignment is to choose plausibly good HTML tags, and they might be different from the ones that we've chosen. So, and that's okay. <coughs> okay, there's a, there's a message board um, discussion area. Um, I'll be setting up a message board discussion area for each homework assignment. Please feel free to use that. That's a great place uh, to go first for questions about your homework um, because not only do all the TAs and myself subscribe to everything that gets posted, so uh, as soon as you post something, all four of us get notified immediately. 
Um, so the first one of us who's available will be able to answer it um, as quickly as possible. Um, not only that, but any question that you have, chances are another student has the same question. So uh, if, if you have questions, the first place you go is the message board to see if your question has already been answered. If it hasn't already been answered, then go ahead and ask it there. Um, you don't have to use the message board if you don't want to. You can just shoot an email to your TAs or come into the IPL. Um, the IPL, by the way, will, uh, will open for this class, will open next Tuesday. So those are the first hours that we're going to start staffing um, the IPL. Uh, but the, uh, the course message board is a great place. Um, it's a very efficient place to get questions answered. <coughs> okay. I think that's all I want to say about that. Uh, oh, uh, the style guide. This is awesome. Man, this, this has happened in the past two years since I uh, last taught this course. And man, this is really awesome. I don't know who put this together, whether this is Marty or Zach or... Um, I, Somebody, somebody who is a total rock star, there are lots of rock stars in this course, but somebody who is a total rock star put this together. And this has everything, everything awesome that you need to know about style for this course. Um, it's got different sections for the different languages, and I, I took a look through this last night, and I just, I, it's, I was blown away because this is so perfect. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not entirely perfect. There are some things that I might disagree with, but um, it's, uh, I understand uh, I understand the goals and, and uh, um, the, why everything is included here. Um, lots of really good stuff. So um, take a look through this um, after you've um, maybe before, either before or after you've implemented your solution. Take a, take a look through this and, and read these uh, style pointers. If you don't understand what they what they're saying, just uh, you know ask a question. Um, it's it's important to. Um, to adhere to cosmetic style standards, um, just so that you um, just so that you write code that's very readable to somebody else. Um, and part of readability is just consistency. Um, if you are involved with a company and everybody writes code the same way, then your eyes get trained to just see things, to notice things in, uh, in particular places. Um, and part of it is um, part of it is subjective. Um, that's that's always the case with stylistic things, and different people have different style uh, stylistic standards. Um, we think that that these are fairly great standards. Um, if you disagree, that's okay, but we'd like you to adhere to these. So um, there there will always be disagreements and things that are subjective, but these are a pretty good good set of stylistic standards. Okay. <clears throat> That's pretty much all I wanted to talk about for that. Okay, let's get into some material. So on Wednesday, we started to talk about CSS. <coughs> and um, actually, I'm going to go back to, uh, to today's. Just a couple of recap slides at the beginning of today. Um, we looked at the basic CSS syntax, which involves a selector followed by a set of rules. A set of rules is in, uh, in the curly braces. The selector might select a single tag, might select uh, multiple elements on the page. It, it could be very simple. It could just be like P, which selects all the paragraphs on the page. Or it could just be like H1, which selects all the H1s on the page. Or it could be like P comma H1, which selects paragraphs and H1s on the page. Um, and that's the beginning of, of starting to get into much more complex selectors. Selectors can actually get really, really complex. You can have any number of commas, you know, any number of, of things that you group together into one selector. Um, you can also have what we'll see for the end of lecture today, and we, we got a sneak peek of that on Wednesday. Um, you can have more complex selectors that select things in t inside of other things, which is uh, extremely useful. This selector thing here turns out to be extremely powerful. Um, in fact, so powerful that um, anybody heard of jQuery? jQuery jQuery is a JavaScript programming library. Um, it's a very, very popular one. It's the most popular one out there. Um, and it, this selector syntax is so powerful that jQuery decided to adopt that for selecting things uh, using JavaScript. Um, we'll talk about that later in the quarter. Um, but it's really, really great. Um, uh, it, one thing I didn't mention was that there's a special selector of star, asterisk. Um, if you use the asterisk selector, it'll select everything. 
So um, I could, uh, if I go back to my example from two, from Wednesday, um, let's see, where is that? That was, so that is that. Um, I'm going to copy that image over. Um, so this is our HTML page that we put together on Wednesday, our first HTML page. It was my resume and, and, uh, and awesomeness. Um, and uh, so I'm going to add a CSS rule for star. Um, Maybe we'll make um, text decoration link. Uh, 13 lectures, page sections first. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so I've, I've just selected everything on the page and made everything blink. Um, uh, the numbers aren't blinking in the list because the numbers are uh, dynamically generated. So they aren't a thing that you can select. Um, so the browser dynamically generates them automatically. Um, so that's a little bit, uh, that, that's something that uh, is difficult to, uh, to style actually, the numbers. Okay, I'm going to turn that off because that's really annoying. <coughs> okay. Um, we also learned how to attach a CSS style sheet. I had um, uh, at least one student who was confused about how to do this. You know, how does this CSS magically apply to the, the HTML of the document? Um, this is how we get it to apply to the document. We have an external CSS file that we put all our CSS rules in. And then with this link tag here, we import that CSS so that the browser applies that, that CSS code to the current HTML page. So every, every different HTML page that we want to use the same CSS file for, we have to have a link tag in that HTML in the head um, to, to import that CSS file and make it apply. So link tag says import and use this file. rel equals style sheet says this is a style sheet. Um, there, are different, there are other files that you can import and actually um, link is not, not exclusively used for importing files, it's also to make sort of like semantic connections to other documents and things like that, but um, that's what that's how that's used. Yeah. Uh, the order, no, it, it doesn't matter at all. Actually, the order of, of any attributes doesn't matter at all. Um, stylistically, I would probably uh, this is a very common ordering. Um, start with href, which is the the name of the file, and then the type, and then the rel at the end. Um, type is actually it's, I think it's sort of fallen out of favor to use type, so you don't have to actually use that anymore, but um, this is fine. <coughs> okay, so more CSS properties. Properties for text. Text align, text decoration. Um, I, I guess I just uh, uh, read ahead and, and used that one before you guys had seen it. Um, text indent, text shadow, blah, blah, blah. There are lots of different uh, properties for text I'm going to go over. So text align, this is uh, the usual sort of thing that you would, uh, would do in like Word or something. You say align left, align right, align center, align justified. Um, this is align justify, right? Text align justify. This, uh, this whole paragraph, that, that means that every um, line in this paragraph is stretched with additional word spacing to, uh, to, to exactly fit within the, uh, the, the boundaries of the paragraph the left and right edges. So um, uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this. Um, in order to do that, um, I'm going to introduce the, the tool that I've been touting since the, the first day. It's called Firebug. Um, and the great thing about Firebug, one of the many great things about Firebug, um, and not exclusively Firebug, there are other tools and other browsers that do the same thing, but uh, one of the great things about it is it allows you to inspect the page, inspect the contents of the page, and modify it just sort of dynamically on the fly. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this paragraph here, and I'm going to inspect it, or this block quote, I'm going to inspect it with Firebug. Um, some, some version of Firefox might, oh yeah, here we go, we have the separate inspect element here. 
that tries to use the internal inspect element thing in Firefox, which is bad. Use this inspect element with Firebug. Um, you have to be using Firebug for the goodness. Um, so what, I'm, what that does is it brings up this little toolbar down at the bottom. Um, it shows me a summary of the HTML document. Um, and over here on the side, it shows me stylistic things, um, style rules that are applied to this. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the style rules that are applied to this element. So th I know that this element is text align justify, so I'm going to look for the rule here that makes it text align justify. Um, let's see, text align justify, here we go. And I'm going to modify that so that it's no longer justify, I'm going to make it um, right. And all of a sudden everything is um, text aligned to the right. Um, so I'm dynamically modifying how this, this page works. Yeah. Are you talking about like left to right or right to left? Which, um, so what I'm doing is I'm, uh, so I, I only have, oh, I, I, do you mean like up here? Let's see. Do we have, mul we, we might have multiple CSS files applying to this. Um, yeah, okay, yes. Uh, yes, you're right. Okay, so you're seeing down here we have multiple CSS files, yes. Um, and and uh, we'll talk about in a sec, um, we'll talk about how um, the browser determines which style rules apply. Um, there's a sort of an order of precedence uh, for, for different style rules. That's a good question. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a sec. So I, what I've done is I've made this, um, I, I've overwritten, I've overwritten um, the, the text align property to make this text align right, and I can make it center, and I can make it left. Um, and I can just uh, change, change this at will. Of course, I'm not changing the original. I'm not changing the version on the server. Um, it doesn't allow me to do that. I'm just, I'm just modifying how it's showing up in my browser. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm modifying a local copy. Um, OK, I'll, I'll just sort of minimize Firefox here for a sec, and then we'll move on. Text decoration. This is uh, how we introduce underlining. Overlining, I have no idea why that's a thing. It's so ugly, but you can use it if you want. Uh, line through Blink. Blink is uh, actually not supported by most browsers now. Firefox is like the only one, I think. Um, you can do multiple if you want. If you want to be really ugly, you can do an overline and an underline. It's up to you. You have that choice. Um, text Shadow is a new one in CSS3. CSS3 is the newest version of CSS. It's actually not even finalized yet. Um, Introduces a lot more special effects and things. Um, in fact, actually, uh, not this week, but next week for our extra session, um, I'm going to be delving further into some newer CSS3 features. Um, I'll, I'll give you sort of a preview of that next, next that'll be next Friday. I'll give you a preview of that next Friday, but um, uh, CSS3 introduces a lot of really cool things. You can make things fly around the page and stuff. It's pretty neat. Um, so this one, uh, maybe I'll just modify this too with Firebug. So let's see, we're going to have to find the text shadow property, where is it, text shadow, here we go. So we'll modify this one and we'll make it like fuchsia because fuchsia is so much better. Um, and then uh, so the first number here is I think the x offset so we can make that like negative 10 and it moves it further to the left. We make this um, negative five, and it moves it up above, and so on. So um, Firebug is a great way of, um, of just sort of learning things, how, how things work, because you can see how, how it uh, affects it immediately. In fact, um, I, sometimes people actually just design in Firebug. They're like, OK, I'm just going to add some style rules and make this, you know, this all apply because they can see immediately how it works, how it, how it takes an effect. Um, and then they just start copy and paste that into their CSS file. 
Um, of course, if you do that, it's easy to forget, you know, to copy and paste in your CSS file, then you reload, and it doesn't, it doesn't show up like you expected it to, so. Um, but that's a common thing. List style type. Um, this allows you to affect the, um, the numbering of an ordered list or an unordered list, so OL or UL. Um, none means nothing at all, so you can turn off the marker, you can turn off the number, you can turn off the bullet completely by saying list style type none. Um, that's a common thing to do. The rest of these are, are much less common. Um, I mean, if you're writing a legal document or something, you might have all these like Roman numerals and alphabetical stuff, whatever. But uh, and you can do like Greek and other stuff. Um, but uh, the, most, the most common ones are uh, just none, basically. And, and disk, actually. Disk um, allows you to, that's the, that's the bullet. Um, sorry, say that again. When you're like searching for like figuring out what what, what styles to apply. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's a good question. So he's saying like uh, there are lots of CSS rules here. How do we know like when we're designing a site? How do we know how to do what we need to do? Well, yeah, you kind of do need to remember that there's a style rule for that. Or I mean, there are there are resources that you can you can peruse through the entire list of CSS uh, uh, um, properties, and you know uh, you can, you can look through the CSS spec, CSS two point one spec um, at the W three C. This organizes things by um, uh, in like in categories and things like that. So this is the spec that all browsers have to adhere to if if they're CSS two point one compliant. Obviously, they don't have to, but they do. Um, so this, you know, groups things into like, okay, so there's a section on selectors, so you can look at all the possible selectors. There's a section on, uh, let's see, um, let's see, visual formatting model, generated content, automatic numbering, and lists. So this is where we'd find the list style type property, and so on. So um, it, it groups everything into categories. So that's, uh, that's possibly a good resource. It's a little bit technical, so um, you know, it might not be as approachable for an, uh, an intro student. Um, you can also look at W3 Schools. That's kind of a classical um, page to go, go to, W3 Schools. Um, I personally don't like W3 Schools a whole lot. It's got tons of ads and um, I don't know, but but you can it, it's it's a it's a resource a lot of people use in life. So yeah, sure. For this one, yeah, yeah. That's that's a good question. So for order lists, the default is decimal, um, and for unordered lists, the default is none. But you can actually switch them back and forth if you want. You can make a UL be list style type decimal if you want. Um, probably isn't a good idea to do that because that you, the, the idea of UL is it's, it's supposed to be unordered and the idea of OL is it's supposed to be ordered. So if you switch them back and forth, I mean it, it, it's fine if you make an OL be bulleted I think because that still implies that there's an order to them. Um, but if you try to make an OL be, uh, sorry, if you try to make a UL be numbered then that doesn't really make sense to me. Mm -hmm. I read a lot of reviews that said you should not depend on this because they said that sometimes they're not following the kind of how people are testing the information that you need. So, which site do you get? There are. Um, there are, so uh, W3Schools is one um, uh, that, that incorporates a lot of uh, browser uh, support. Um, there are others that, that talk about different browser support, um, uh, the varying browser support for different features. I don't want to get into that right now. Uh, for now, we're sort of in the, in the kiddie pool, and uh, we want to sort of assume that everything just works. 
Um, it's not the case that everything just works, but uh, later on in the quarter we'll talk about when things don't work and how to, uh, how to get around that. Um, yes, it's true that not all browsers support all features, um, especially with CSS. Um, but it's the case that this is a, a version of CSS, CSS 2.1, um, that is very widely supported now. So pretty much everything here you can count on working. Not everything, but pretty much everything. At the end of the quarter, we'll talk about how to fix it when it doesn't work. Good question. OK, uh, properties for backgrounds. Let's see, you can change the background color or something. We talked about that before. Uh, background image, you can put an image behind everything if you want to. Um, you can position that background image, you know, uh, however you want to. You can make it repeat uh, and so on. So we're going to take a look at a couple of those. So background image here, we're putting this single image here, this images slash draft.jpg. Um, this is actually just like, it, just this single word draft is the image. And it's just being repeated. Um, it's being tiled. Um, you can make it repeat in different directions if you want. Repeat X makes it repeat horizontally. Repeat Y makes it repeat vertically. Um, and then you can just say no repeat if you want to turn off repeating. So we've turned off repeating on this slide. Um, and we've positioned it in a particular location, a particular pixel location. Um, body styles, we talked about body styles on Wednesday. You can set the base font size for everything to a particular font size. You can set base color to a particular color, and then override it uh, in, in particular instances where you need to override it. Here we go, styles that conflict. Um, in general, you should sort of assume that the, if two different style rules apply to the same element, and they set two different things, so in this case we have H2 is being set to color blue, but then later on, uh, it, it, as part of this list of elements, but then later on we have H2 color red, the later one is going to override the, the earlier one. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Actually, it's very complicated. The rules with, that, that CSS uses to determine which things will be applied. Um, but in general, at least for now, you can assume that um, with these types of selectors, um, the later one will always override the earlier one. Embedding style sheets. Okay, now we're going to teach you about something that um, we need to teach you about, but is a bad thing. Um, and I'm going to tell you specifically why it's bad. Well, I, I'm going to ask you actually why this is bad. So you can, if you want to, you can, uh, so what we've done is we've uh, put a CSS file externally in a separate .css file. But you can, if you want, embed stylistic information inside of the HTML document, inside of the head tag, in a tag called style, so a style element. You can just put CSS code there. Why do you think this is a bad thing? Yeah, yeah well, so if you want to reuse style code, uh, you can't link to the same CSS document from two HTML documents if you're putting the CSS code directly in the HTML document, right? So if you, if you move the CSS code out to a separate file, you can link to that same file from, from multiple HTML files. So you can reuse the code. Um, so, so basically, I mean, that's, that's really what it boils down to, is reusing the code. Um, there's another place where you can put it, but it's generally a bad thing to do and that's in a style attribute. So inside of the opening tag, just like an href attribute or a, um, a, an image source attribute, um, you can specify a style attribute with CSS code inside the quotes. Um, so that, that'll apply just to that single element specifically. Um, again, this is a bad idea because you can't reuse that, you can't, it, 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 it applies specifically to that element and you can't reuse that code in a different file. But, I mean, this is sort of like, um, this is one of those things that we try to instill a really, like, we, 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 we try to come down hard on you and, and have that, you know, that angel on your shoulder, you know, saying, oh, is this the right thing to do? If you try, if you think, find yourself wanting to try to do this, um, we, we sort of try to instill that, I don't know, Catholic guilt in you. 
uh, if you try to use this. No, I shouldn't be using this. No. But there are circumstances under which you should use it. Okay. So we, we want to, uh, uh, by default, you should assume that you can't use it. And if you eliminate all other possibilities and you, and you know that you should use it, then, it, then that's okay. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like global variables um, in like Java or JavaScript or any, any other programming language. In 142, 143, we sort of hammered into you that um, you, know, you, you shouldn't use global variables. Actually, that, that's what people come away with is that, that I shouldn't use global variables, I shouldn't use global variables. That's totally not true. Global variables are great, they're fine but not if they're unnecessary. You can have a thousand global variables in your document. As long as each and every one is absolutely necessary, you're totally fine. In fact, you're, you're better than fine because you're implementing, you're, you're solving the problem in the best way possible because you've, you've, you've determined that each and every one is absolutely necessary. But as soon as you add one that's completely unnecessary, that's bad. That's a bad thing. So um, we, we just try to... Um, we, we try to make you think very, very hard. It, it, the problem with, with uh, global variables especially is that it's difficult to see that it's actually completely unnecessary. You have to think about the problem really, really hard in order to determine, yes, this is absolutely necessary, or this is, uh, in order to be able to see that, oh, I don't actually need this. I, I can um, solve the problem in a different way, a more elegant way that doesn't use a global variable. So that's, that's why we, we, we hammer in these, uh, these style things. We just make you think, basically. Yeah. Okay, so, so exceptions to this when you use this kind of thing, uh, when, what, would that, what would the example of an exception? Um, but, well, a good example of an exception is just a complete one-off. You, you know that this is the only place you're going to apply these, uh, these CSS styles to. Um, and you know that there's... there's um, there's no way that you're going to want to change that. It's uh, it's something that you you want to just hard code into the, the HTML document. You don't need to use it in another HTML document, um, and you don't need to be able to reuse the code or um, to be able to like change. If you change a style sheet, actually, that gets to uh, uh, the next slide here. Um, so the the great thing about uh, about having an external CSS file is that you can completely change the CSS file if you want to change the appearance of the page. Um, if you want to do a redesign of your website, um, and I, all you really need to do is, um, is, just, is just delete your CSS file and start a new one, and you've completely redesigned your website. You just upload the new CSS file, and you're done. Um, you've completely redesigned your page. Um, it's not quite as, as simple as that. It, in theory, it's really beautiful, but in practice, it's actually somewhat complicated. Uh, but this is a good, this website here is a classic example of the reusability of, of HTML code and just swapping out CSS files. So this entire website, um, they had designers uh, submit new designs for this website. And what they do is if you uh, select a design over here on the right, it doesn't change any of the HTML it only changes the CSS code and the images that, are, that the CSS code links to. And the entire appearance of the page changes completely. All the same HTML code is used. It's just different CSS code. And everything is just vastly, vastly different. All of this can be accomplished just by switching out the CSS. Um, there's another one over here. So um, <clears throat> lots of, of, uh, of flexibility that CSS offers. So that's, that's the great thing about CSS. Um, in practice, that's actually, uh, that, that website is actually fairly complex in order to achieve that. that it, they had to uh, add a bunch of HTML code that made it much more flexible for, uh, for the target of styling. Uh, but that's, that's the way it works in general. OK. Um, this is not entirely accurate. Cascade actually refers to something slightly different. But uh, in general, this is, this is a good approximation of what cascade means. Um, there's an order of precedence to the way uh, CSS rules are applied. First, the browser's default styles are applied. So uh, most browsers, by default, they say, OK, well, I'm going to make an H1 
I'm going to make um, strong be bold. I'm going to make em be italic. I'm going to make um, the default type of list style for an, a ul be bulleted, and the default for an ol be uh, decimal, and all that stuff. Um, and I'm going to add some other stuff like margins and padding and stuff like that that we'll talk about on Monday. Um, so the browser applies just a basic default style sheet so that uh, any HTML element that's rendered on the page, it sort of um, indicates visually like what type of element that is. Um, that gets overridden by anything in a link, uh, in an external CSS file that's linked uh, through a link tag. Any, uh, any of those get uh, overridden um, in a style tag uh, in the page header. And any of those get overridden in the style attribute of an, of an element. So this is the order of precedence uh, for styles. Um, and certain styles are inherited. Um, certain other styles are not. Um, for example, font size is usually inherited. Um, but color is not. Um, well, color is in some circumstances. Um, Boldness, um, let's see, okay, so what is this example? This example is background color. Background color is not, not inherited, so the body is background color, but everything else um, actually just has a background color of invisible, um, so that whatever you see, whatever behind it just bleeds through. Um, color red, background color aqua overrides uh, background color invisible. Text decoration, overline, underline. Um, so by default, um, hyperlinks have a, a greater, uh, so they, they, by default, the, the browser style sheet um, makes a specific color for the, uh, the link tag. So it doesn't inherit the background, the color of red. Um, let's see, H2, text line center, bullet list. Um, yeah, so some, some styles are inherited um, and some styles are not. Um, uh, the, the biggest ones to inherit are usually um, uh, font size. Uh, and the ones that are, one of the, the most notable ones that's not inherited is color on, uh, on links. Pseudo classes. Um, so there's a, a special modification to a selector. Um, this colon link, colon visited, colon hover. Um, these are variants of the A tag in a particular state. So a tag when it's an unvisited link, uh, I can give it a particular color. I can give it a particular color when it's already been visited. I can give it a particular color when the mouse is hovering over it. So those are three different state variations of the A tag. Um, I can do that uh, for any actual, actually any elements on the page. Um, for example, um, let's go back to our star here. I'm going to say star colon hover. Um, color uh, yellow. Oh, um, I think that's, uh, that's applying, okay, if I go away from the page, uh, okay, so the fact that I'm in body now makes everything inherit the color. Um, so that, didn't, that wasn't very, very, uh, very illustrative. So maybe I'll do um, font. No, uh, that's not really going to work because most of the stuff that I want to change will be inherited. Um, anyhow, so there are other uh, pseudo classes. See focus. Um, if you have like a, a form field element where you like type text, um, it's focused. If you've clicked in the box and it's accepting input, that's focus. Um, Let's see. You can also, uh, there are these other things like first letter, first line. These are actually called pseudo elements and not pseudo classes. But uh, you can select an element when it's the first child of something else and so on. We'll, we'll take a look at more, more of that later. Okay. Um, last thing I want to talk about today is page sections. So um, <clears throat> web pages have uh, different areas. Uh, it, it's very common for there to be like a header area and a sidebar area and another sidebar area. And, uh, you know, different portions of the page that have different, different pieces of content. And we want to be able to style uh, those areas differently. Oftentimes we want to be able to target elements if they're in the sidebar, if they're in 
you know, an, uh, a, a blog post section or if they're in like the header. Um, I want to style link tags differently if they're in the header than if they're in the sidebar and so on. Um, so uh, we want to we want to use those sections, those areas, to help uh, help target uh, elements inside of them. And one of the ways that we can do that is with uh, an attribute called ID. Um, if we give something an ID, then we can select that specific thing. Um, so uh, it, the question was asked on Wednesday: What if I want to target a specific thing or a specific group of things that uh, that don't don't coincide with the tag name? So I want to se select you know, certain paragraphs only if they have, you know, certain properties or whatever. Or I want to select just this single thing. Um, not all paragraphs, but just this single one. Um, this is how you do that. You slap an ID on it to select a, a single unique thing. Um, an ID, you can't use an ID more than once, a, a particular ID more than once in a page. So this ID equals mission. I can't assign anything else on this page the ID of mission. ID is unique for that page. Um, that's, uh, that's what differentiates ID from uh, something else called a class. A class is something that you can attach to multiple things on the page. So if you have um, certain paragraphs that are different than other paragraphs, and you have several of those types of paragraphs, maybe it's like an error message or something, and you might have several different error message paragraphs on a page, you can say p class equals error, uh, you know, once, and then you can say p class equals error again, those are both errors, and you can style the error paragraphs differently than other paragraphs. Um, <clears throat> another thing that you can use for um, IDs is you can, uh, if you just, if you say hash uh, the name of the ID, um, it, it, and you've assigned an ID to an element on the page, um, so in the URL, in the address bar, if you add hash ID, then it'll jump down to that, the thing with that ID, uh, which is kind of useful. Um, to select things uh, that have an ID, you use the hash syntax in the CSS selector. So hash mission styles the thing with the ID of mission. Yeah? Would the example be like Wikipedia, table, uh, and you've got on, so you've got table that you can actually um, on Wikipedia, you've got the table of contents where you can click on that and jump to that particular uh, mm -hmm. part of the page. Yes. Perfect example. Uh, yeah. So at, at the top of lots of Wikipedia articles, if they have lots of subheaders in that article, they'll have a table of contents with a list of links, and you can click that list of, you can click a particular link, and it'll jump down to that section. They use IDs for that. So you use hash, the, the ID of that header, and then the, the, the browser jumps down to that header. That's a, that's a great example. Um, okay, so the class attribute, you say class equals blah, blah, blah. You can attach multiple classes to a single thing. Uh, I'll see that in a sec. Um, so dot special is a dot, uh, the, the name of the class is the selector for classes. So anything with the class of special gets applied uh, these rules. Uh, you can specify, um, so this will apply to any element with a class of special. But if I want to speci specify only paragraphs with a class of shout, and I say p dot shout. Um, it's important that you don't have a space in between there. So not p space dot shout, just p dot shout. Um, and that will apply only to paragraphs with a class of shout. You can specify multiple classes on a single element, just separate them with space. Um, so this has both the shout rules and the special rules applied to it. Uh, okay. Um, oh, uh, sections of a page. Okay. Um, one of the ways that we can target different elements in different areas of the page is we can group elements together. Um, we can use what I what I refer to as rubber band elements. I'm saying all of these elements are together in in a thing. Um, and in order to do that, we can use something called a div. Div stands for division. So division of the page, you might use a division of the page for everything that's in the header of the page, the top of, of the page with like the navigation links and like the logo and stuff like that. Um, so you can wrap all of that in a div and give that div an ID of like, you know, page header or something. And then all of the stuff 
in that, uh, you can target specifically, um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how to do that in a sec, uh, you can target all the stuff in the header differently than you target uh, uh, things in, in different other sections. Uh, you can do a, a separate div for like the sidebar. You can do a separate div for like the main content area. Um, and so uh, you can assign each of them an ID or a set of classes or um, it, it, uh, uh, different things that allow you to in, uh, mark them um, uh, and, and target them for styling. Um, a div has no special appearance by default. Um, it's, it, it, it's really basically it's only a target for styling. Uh, it, it just groups things together. Inline sections, um, you can use a span. Um, if no other inline elements like em or bold or uh, em or strong or um, like, you know, uh, uh, what are some of the other ones like SAMP or code or um, any, any of those other ones, if, if no other inline element is appropriate, um, a, a, an appropriate semantic um, uh, uh, choice for whatever you want to whatever you want to do, you can use a span instead, and maybe attach a class to it. So span class equals like um, if you uh, if you saw in the the section on on uh, on Tuesday the uh, that should have been posted on Tuesday, was that not? It was there, but it's not anymore. Weird. Okay. Um, let's see. Sections. Section one. There we go. Um, so in this example on Tuesday, if you got to the oh no, I guess it's next week. Hang on. Uh, I guess I must have removed it. Um, okay, so if you, uh, <clears throat> like an example of, of this is maybe you have a, a, a you want to mark this as a term or something, like you want to mark this as a thing that, that could be defined, you could say class equals term, or if you want to mark it as, uh, um, so if, if you're marking up a play and all the character names in your play have a particular style have like different styles applied to them, then you can say class equals character or something. Um, so this is basically, uh, it allows you to uh, instill a little bit more meaning in uh, whatever you want to, uh, uh, whatever this is. Um, <clears throat> so you can style, um, you can style things differently based on uh, their class or on uh, an ID that's applied to it. Um, HTML5 also introduces a few new page section tags. So before HTML5, we basically just used divs with uh, different IDs or classes. Um, and, uh, and as soon as HTML5 came along, um, it, when they were developing HTML5, they realized, well, this is a really, really common thing for people to have a header section and people to have a, like a navigation section and like a sidebar and, and like different like articles and things like that. So they just decided to come up with tags for those, for those different things. So header and footer are things that you can wrap around the top and the bottom of the page. Nav is something that you usually wrap, wrap around like a list of links or something um, to indicate that it's navigation. Heading, um, not to be confused with header, heading is a compound heading, something that wraps, it sort of rubber bands multiple H, H, you know, H1 or H2 or whatever is together. Um, so if you have a, a heading that you know is like the main heading plus a subheading, and you want to group that together into a single heading, then you wrap it in a heading tag. A side is for something like usually a sidebar or like, you know, like a footnote or something like that. Section, just a generic section of the page that's not any of the other types of sections. I would use, usually use this for like the central area of the page um, and maybe possibly sections inside of that central section. And then article, um, this is a common thing obviously with blogs and news articles and those particular periodical entries, um, you can use article for those. <clears throat> okay, uh, lastly, context selectors. We looked at this uh, briefly on Wednesday. The, uh, the most important context selector to know is, is the, the, easy, the, the most difficult to see, it's just the space. So if you have selector 
and you want to style something inside of that, then you use a space. So for example, on, uh, on Wednesday, we did, we styled all P's that are inside of block quotes this particular way. Um, so I styled, uh, so the space just basically means um, P inside of block quote. Um, this means anywhere inside of block quote. So it doesn't have to be like a child of, of the block quote. It could be like a grandchild or a great-grandchild or a great-great-great-grandchild. You could have like a bunch of tags deep. Um, this paragraph might be a bunch of tags deep inside of the block quote. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be directly inside of the block quote. Um, that's where this comes in. The arrow selector um, applies to this selector only when it's immediately inside of, of this selector. So, um, so say I have... Um, uh, I'm going to have a div down here. No, I'm going to have a footer down here that um, that says um, this is an example of my elite coding skills. Okay, and I want to write some H. I want to write some code. I want to write like some JavaScript code or something, so I can like. I, you know, brag about my, my great great coding skills. Uh, what would I what tag would I use to uh, to mark up some code? Okay, code tag. Um, so maybe I'll say like you know, function foo equals or function foo um, for var i equals zero i less than um, thirty i plus plus Alert million is red. Okay, so that's that's my uh, awesome JavaScript code. Um, what's what's the problem with this? Like, what 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 do I want to be different about this? Yeah. Yeah, I want my white space to be retained. Um, and you know all of this, like I, I have this specially formatted the way I want it to look. Um, so I want the white space to be retained. How do I do that? Pre, okay. So I can wrap this in a pre. Okay, that also might not be what I want. Why? Why is it all indented like that? because it's indented here. <laughs> it's just saying, okay, I'm going to retain all the white space. I'm going to retain all this indentation here. Um, I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, and I think actually if you use pre and code together, um, you actually have to do something like this. So I'm going to do that. Uh, the other thing that my, uh, my syntax highlighting is pointing out is that uh, this is wrong, right? What does this need to be? Yeah, the ampersand LT semicolon. I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna convert that. Hey, convert these. Convert selection to entities. There we go. Um, so the ampersand LT semicolon. That's uh, that's the escaped version of the less than sign. Yeah. When do you use pre and code together? Oh, um, so I think, so if, if I don't, if I do this, I think it, uh, it retains this, this new line. So it'll have a new line at the beginning. I don't think I want it to have the new line at the beginning. I think I want to, because it's going to retain white space. So I don't want it to have a new line before a new line after. That's that, yeah, so that got rid of the new line before. <clears throat> um, so this is sort of a, an argument that I have with Marty, um, actually. So I, I, I think that it's most semantically correct to use pre and code together when this stuff is code. Okay? So pre is not sufficient in my mind to indicate that this is code. Pre could be anything pre-formatted. But code specifies that it's actually code that I'm writing and not something else. Um, Marty's like, oh, whatever. It's you know, I'll just make it preformatted. I, I don't, I don't, I don't. He, he doesn't really feel the, the the compulsion that I do to make it semantically important. But um, you can do whatever you want. I prefer this way. Okay. <clears throat> um, 
So let's do a couple of um, selectors. So um, I'm going to say, um, um, specifically, I like the code tag. Okay, I'm going to escape that. Okay, and I want to say, oh, I'm going to have to actually wrap this in a code tag, right? So because this is HTML code, I want to indicate that it's code, so I'm wrapping it in a code tag. Um, and I want to style the two codes differently. I want to style this code um, because maybe it's inside of a pre-tag, I want to style that differently than the other one. So let's go back up, uh, and refresh up here. Um, so I have the footer down here that's got um, a pre that's got some code in it and then I've got this other code up here. Maybe I want to style this code differently from that code. Um, I want to style this code to be like yellow or something. Um, so there are a couple of different ways that we could do that. We could um, we can style it because it's inside the footer. Footer code maybe. Back Ground color yellow. That seems like a, a good way of doing it. Or we could target it because it's inside of the pre-tag. Maybe, um, maybe I know that uh, as I'm developing this document, in other instances, wherever I have pre and code together, this block of code, I always want to style that the same way. So maybe this is, this is what I want to do. Um, maybe footer code I would use it only if this is just a one-off, if I only want to style the one in the footer this way. And I want to do that on all pages. Um, I think I'm going to go with pre-code, maybe so, so that this is more reusable. Um, or I could do, um, uh, maybe I want to style this one differently. Um, I'm going to give this a, um, uh, an ID, so this paragraph, I can target this ID specifically. I can say ID equals foo. Um, no, I'm not going to call it foo. That's a bad name. I'm going to say uh, welcome because it's saying, hi, my name is Morgan. So that's kind of a welcome. Um, and I'm going to say dot welcome. Oh, sorry. I, I made an ID, right? So I have to use hash welcome. Um, I'm going to say um, font style italic. OK, font style italic for the welcome. OK, but maybe I want to undo the italic for the code. I don't want the code to be italic. I want to say welcome code font style normal. And that undoes the italicization for that. Um, and that's the last slide for today. Um, that we'll, we'll continue with this on Monday. So have a good weekend.